the testimony we will give today in the matter of the state of Georgia versus Jose Abaro be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be heard. Yes, ma'am. Joshua Epps, J O S H U A. Last name's Epps, E P P S. Where do you work? University of Georgia Police Department. How long have you worked there? Um, roughly six and a half, almost seven years. What are your duties and responsibilities? I'm a patrol sergeant, so I supervise roughly 12 to 14 patrol officers as well as um, I'm on the bomb team. I'm a certified bomb technician, um, and I'm on a special response team, which is kind of like SWAT or active shooter response. Were you called to an apartment <coughs> complex at 2085 Millage Avenue in athens Clark County, Georgia on the 23rd day of February 2024? Yes, ma'am. Could you tell the court at about what time did you get called there? Roughly 8.32 in the morning. Who called you there? Tim Johnson uh, requested that through um, a radio system for a, a UGA police officer, and I was close by. Who does he work for? At the Clark County Police Department. How long did it take you to get on scene? Maybe five minutes. I was in the five points area, um, so I wasn't far away. When you responded, were you in uniform as you are today? Yes, ma'am. And did you uh, respond in a marked patrol car? Yes, ma'am. When you responded, were you wearing a body cam video? Yes, ma'am. And was it recording? Yes, ma'am. When you got there, who, if anyone, did you meet with? I met with, I met with Tim Johnson, um, and I believe there was maybe one or two other Athens Clark County officers on scene as well. And was there an individual there who had been detained? Yes, ma'am. What, what, what is that individual's name? Uh, Diego. What's his last name? Ibarra, for sure. Yes, ma'am. And did you have the opportunity to interact with Diego Ibarra that day? Yes, ma'am. Did you have the opportunity to observe Diego Ibarra that day? Yes, ma'am. And if you could tell the court approximately how long were you with Diego Abara that day? That day, several hours, um, probably upwards of five hours. And without telling us what he said, did you ask Diego Abara questions? Yes. Did he answer your questions? Yes. And for the record, in what language were you communicating with Diego Abara? I was using a translator to speak Spanish to him. Um, I can't speak Spanish, so. Um, I was speaking with one of my Spanish-speaking officers who was relaying the questions to him. At some point, did you call two Spanish-speaking officers out? Yes, ma'am. Who are those officers? What are their names? Uh, the first one was Mason Bridges. He's a corporal. And the second one was Rafael Sayan. Uh, he's a corporal as well. Could you say uh, spell Corporal Sayan's last name for Madam Court Reporter? S-A-Y-A-N. And are both of those individuals native speakers? Yes. Of Spanish? Yes. So they were helping you translate? Correct. I want to approach, oh, sorry, I don't have to ask that anymore. One moment. I'm going to approach and hand you a few things. First, I'm going to hand you what's been marked for identification purposes of State's Exhibit 177. Do you recognize 177? Yes, ma'am. What is it? My body camera footage. Have you seen it prior to today? Yes, ma'am. Is a fair and accurate recording of your body cam footage on? 23rd day of February 2024 at the apartment complex that we just discussed. Yes, ma'am. State would move to admit states 177 and request permission to publish parts of it. Your Honor, I'm going to have to object to this today. Unlike other body cameras we see in this video, we have, um, I would say, a contested witness, Diego Obara, and then later our candidates of our giving statements. <clears throat> to the extent that those statements are on the body cam, we have to object. What we can do, Your Honor, we don't intend to offer this. Statements, uh, the content of those statements until and after those witnesses testify. Um, so at this time, we can play those portions of the body cam on you. So that we want, we are just offering this part of the body cam for the images that you see, and we don't have to uh, play the audio. Uh, the only time we intend to play a part of the audio for State's Exhibit 177 is with the next witness who's going to talk about statements made by this defendant at the scene, which would be a statement made of the Defendant, which is not hearsay. Very well. It will be admitted for that purpose. And we'll go to restrictions at this time. And so I'll mute it when we're talking to uh, the other two residents. The audio will come back in when this officer enters the residence. 
So if at any time, if you feel like I have violated that stipulation, I would just ask that you make a contemporaneous objection so we can handle it. Yes. Thank you. Handing you what's been uh, marked as State's Exhibit 1, 78 through 194. I'm going to have you look at all of those, and then uh, I'll ask you some questions. Do you recognize those documents? Yes, ma'am. What are they? They're photos that were taken on scene that day of uh, different individuals on scene. Are those photos that you took that day of, first of all, Diego Abara? Yes, ma'am. Uh, is there also a photo of Arhenis Abara? Yes, ma'am. And are there photographs of Jose Abara? Yes, ma'am. And do all of those photographs take exhibit? 178 to 194, do they all accurately depict those three individuals as you saw them on February 23rd of 2024? Yes, ma'am. State would move to admit states 178 through 194, request permission to publish. No objection. They're admitted, you may. I'm going to play part of states 177, um, and for the record, Sergeant, and for counsel and for the court, uh, we are going to use the timer at the top right corner of your video uh, to discuss any timestamps on the video. Is that timer in UTC? Yes, ma'am. And what is UTC? Um, it's 24 hour time. And at 13, uh, 36 is when your video starts. Would that be what time uh, in Eastern Standard Time? Uh, 1336 would be 136, I believe. Right, so that's UTC. Right. Oh, so, so what time did you get on the seat? Okay, sorry, 8.32. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So 13.36 UTC is 8.36. 8.36. A.M. in Eastern Standard Time, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, just so we have that straight. Your Honor, if you could toggle over, we're going to play a little bit of uh, 177, and for the record, it's, it's going to be muted, so there'll be no um, sound for the first parts of it until this officer enters, and I'll clear the record up for that. Oh, you know what? It's not plugged in, so it is there. There we go. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm gonna make sure it's muted. So since 177, the very first video that we're playing is on mute, uh, tell the court what we're looking at here. I'm arriving on scene initially. I'm about to meet with Sergeant Tim Johnson, Madison Park County Police Department. That individual we see in the frame at 1337, who's that? Um, that is Sergeant Tim Johnson. Um, I can't remember the name of the other officer in the background, and that is Diego in the red sweatshirt. And what uh, apartment number is Diego standing out front of? D126. Does Sergeant Johnson show you an image at some point um, in this encounter with him? Yes, r right now. Um, he's showing me a still frame image from video that they had uh, recovered that I didn't have at that time. And that still frame image, do we see it in your screen at 1337? Yes, ma'am, on the phone. And was that an image taken from a dumpster nearby? Yes. So he shows you that image, and then what do you do? Um, I One, this is news to me. Um, I was coming on shift roughly maybe an hour before this. Um, 
So I relayed that to my superiors who were about to pull up, um, coincidentally, um, and explained to them that, hey, they've, they've got footage. At that time, I was not aware that they had already um, been aware of that footage. The footage that was shown to you uh, by Sergeant Johnson, uh, what, if anything, was significant about it to you and then what you were observing for yourself on Diego Labara? Um, at first, videoing it or reviewing the video, um, or sorry, the still frame photo, um, Sergeant Johnson informs me that the image shows a male holding a hat or having a black Adidas hat, and then he informs me that I couldn't necessarily see from that distance until I get closer to Diego, but that Diego is wearing an identical hat, a black Adidas flat bill hat. Did you make any observations about the hat that Diego was wearing? Once I got closer, yes. I noticed uh, on the back um, what I believe to be dirt um, on the brim. And was that significant to you? Yes. Why? Because I was on scene when we located um, Lakin um, the day prior. Um, she did have a lot of dirt, mulch, um, and things like that on her body. Um, and I felt that if um, an individual was wearing that hat and was touching Lakin in that manner, um, dirt could have been transferred to the hat by moving the hat. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit for uh, the record. At some point, you began talking to Diego Ibarra through your interpreter. Correct. Yes, ma'am. And how would you describe Diego Ibarra's demeanor with you and, and well, with you? Um, I mean, he's compliant. He's, he's not posing any issues. Obviously, there's a, a block there through communication. Uh, but based off his physical mannerisms, I'm not really getting any deceptive behavior, per se. I was aware at this point he did provide a fake green card, so he was detained for that. Right. Um, he seemed to um, understand that we were detaining him for an investigative purpose. Um, there appeared to be good rapport between him and officers, um, especially with Officer Bridges there, who you see. Um, if you could, do you have the pointer in front of you? I, I'm not sure if I do. Oh, here we go. Thank you. I'll point out to the court at 1342 in your muted video that we're playing, where's Officer Bridges? He's right here in an identical uniform that I'm wearing. All right. And the one closest to Diego in this frame? Correct. Okay. Go ahead. So you uh, talked to him at some point. At some point, do you decide to obtain a search warrant for the apartment and to freeze the apartment? Correct. Tell us a little bit about that process. Um, well, based on the fact that he was wearing that hat, um, the time frame that, they, that Tim Johnson encountered him was within 24 hours of the murder. He was walking back towards the general direction of campus, which was concerning as well. Um, he somewhat matched the description of the male scene in that photo, discarding of what I've later learned was evidence found in that dumpster. And specific what evidence? A sweater um, or a pullover of some sort uh, with blood on it okay. and hair. Okay. And yeah. did you ever see that evidence or you were just informed of that? No, it was picked up throughout the middle of the night. I was there all day the day before. They sent me home to get a sleep cycle and okay. I was the supervisor this day. All right. Um, so I never saw the evidence throughout the night. All right, go ahead. Um, and what then about from the proximity from the dumpster to Lake and Riley's body? Um, the dumpster to Lake and Riley's body, probably rough estimate 500 yards. Okay. All right. Yeah. So um, at some point um, when you're with Diego Ibarra and you decide to get the search warrant, um, how do you, first of all, how do you communicate that to get the search warrant? Um, I go and talk to my superiors and I ask them because they're maybe 20, 30 yards away in the parking lot at a, another vehicle discussing. I think they were talking to some GBI agents and other um, agency partners. Um, <clears throat> and I asked for clarification of, um, at this point I gained knowledge there were other individuals inside the apartment. Um, I wanted to start getting resources in um, and confirming that yes, we are gonna go ahead and surround it, a warrant's gonna be sought, um, and I need other translators here because from what I'm gathering, no one else speaks Fan or speaks English inside the apartment. And how many other individuals did you believe to be inside the apartment? At this time, three. And could you see them from where you're standing? No, um, not without being intrusive of sticking my face up to that window, um, which we didn't do. Um, one, for an officer safety standpoint, um, but also 
Um, you know, I didn't have a warrant at that point yet. Do you see the window? You said the window. Can you point the window out? Is yes. That, and, and that's, at, is again, 1342. Is that the window to D-126? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to roll a little more. At some point, do you start asking Diego uh, questions about whether he has any injuries? Uh, eventually, yes, okay. I do. And does, uh, do you take pictures of him, and do you see parts of his body? Correct. Yes, I do. All right. video first and then show you some photos. First of all, did you, uh, you mentioned to us that there was a fake ID, so you knew he had given a fake ID. Tell us a little bit of that process. Um, I didn't obtain it myself. It was provided to uh, Sergeant Johnson when he located him and was identifying him. Um, Sergeant Johnson provided it to me and stated, if you look at it, there's two different dates of birth listed. There was one vertically on the side and then one listed with the rest of his identification information. Um, so did you agree with Sergeant Johnson's assessment that this was not a valid form of government identification? Correct, yes ma'am. Um, I'm gonna go to, I'm still muted. <laughs> okay. About, uh, 1358 on State's Exhibit 177. What are we looking at here now at 1358? I believe at this point my captain, um, Seth Robinson, was interested in seeing his hands. Um, and does, asking, he, does he show you your, your, his hands? Yeah, see, so Captain Robinson, I believe, asked um, Officer Bridges to relay to him to please you know, show us your hands, and he complied okay. and put his hands out. And did you see his hands? I did. Did you see any injuries to his hands? No. At 1359, what are we seeing Diego Ibarra do? Um, he was asked about, um, I believe they were asking if, you know, if he could take his jacket off, and they were looking at tattoos as well as trying to make observations of any other potential injuries. And, and, he, and, go ahead. and he takes his jacket off and becomes, I, I don't know exactly what he says, he starts right. kind of ranting a little bit and pulls his shirt up um, and shows us his stomach and his side tattoo. And do you see any injuries on his stomach? From my vantage point, no, I did not. And if you had seen any injuries, would you have documented them? Yes. Okay. So, uh, may we toggle over, Your Honor? <laughs> States 178, what are we looking at there? That is a picture of Diego. And do we see the hat he's wearing uh, in this image? Yes. Is that the black Adidas hat that you've already described? Yes, ma'am. States 179, well, who is that? That's Diego. Okay, and on his face, does he have any tattoos? He does, he has a teardrop tattoo um, on his right eye, um, kind of off to the side there. It's a little hard to see if you zoomed in, um, but we identified as potential gang affiliation can, can um, you, tattoo. Can you point to that on yes. the right side for 179? So what that image is, or that mark on his face at States 179, was that an injury? No, it's a tattoo. All right, thank you. States 180. Again, it's Diego. 
And do you see a tattoo on his neck? Yes, ma'am. Right, please point to that. 182. Diego again. Okay, does he have tattoos on the back of his neck? Yes, ma'am. Could you please point to those? 183. It's a close up of the, the picture we just looked at. And, it, and in 183, can you actually see the rest of the hat? You can, yeah. Okay. 184. A uh, rib cage tattoo. Um, I'm not sure what the design was. different section of your video and again we are gonna it's played on mute we are now at uh, 1434 in the top count up, count for the record so that would be 938 a.m. am I right about that yes ma'am right. at 938 a.m. we see a individual in a yellow shirt can you please point to that person first of all and who is that person that is a brother Arhenis, uh, either Arhenis or Arhenis uh, Ibarra. And how did this person appear in, in this video? What happened? He, while speaking with Diego um, and waiting for resources and other things, he walked out with a trash bag, um, like a five gallon plastic white trash bag that you would buy at Kroger. Was he detained as well? Yes. And did you photograph him that day? We did. And I don't need to toggle over, but states 185, who is that? That's our Hennis. 183. <clears throat> At some point, did you obtain consent to enter the apartment from our Hennis? Yes. And did you in fact enter the apartment? I did. What was your purpose of entering the apartment? Um, well, he informed us that something was on the stove and that he was very adamant about going in to turn the stove off, I believe because of a fire hazard. Um, so that was what we asked for consent to do. And prior to going in, did you look to see if there are residents inside? I did a what we call a threshold evaluation. So I kind of peeked around from an angle because um, the door was already open. When Arhenis left, he left the door open. Um, so I could kind of see what the environment inside looked like. And when I didn't see any obvious threats, um, that's when I got closer to the doorway. In States 177, we're now playing the second video for the record and we're at 1442. Could you show, show the court where the open door is yes. in the frame? you the time where you made entry. Right. At this point I am going to play, so 14, we're at 14.55 for the record, and I am going to play this video with volume because there's no statements of individuals, um, but the officers, and there is no confrontation issue here. But now our video is not working. Our audio is not working. There we go.
Okay, I'm going to pause it at 1458 for the record. Uh, the, were there people inside the apartment? Yes. How many? Two. What were they doing? Laying in bed. Could you see their hands or their bodies? No. You had Bridges translate for you at some point, and um, when you went in, we could see a light. Were you holding a flashlight in your hand? Yes, ma'am. Right. Were there, in fact, beans on the stove? There were okay. in a crock pot, the ceramic part of a crock pot. Right. And you turned those off? I tried. The individual, first of all, the two individuals was one male and one was female. Correct. Okay. The female, what, what was her name? Her name was Rosabelli, and I can't remember her last name at the moment. The other male that was in the apartment, what is his name? Jose Laura. And do you see that person that you pulled out of the apartment at 1458 in the screen? Yes, you do. And what color clothing is he wearing? Uh, red shirt, uh, black shorts, and like black and red sandals. And the person that you pulled out of the apartment on 23rd day of February 2024, do you see him in the courtroom today? I do. Please point to him and describe an article of clothing that he's wearing for the record. Uh, he's wearing a striped button-down shirt. May the record reflect the witnesses identified the defendant. Did you at some point have the opportunity to observe Jose Abara, the defendant, on scene? Yes. Uh, how close were you at times to Jose Abara? Uh, your normal conversation distance, maybe a foot, foot and a half. Did you observe any injuries to Jose Abara? I did. What injuries did you observe? While speaking to him, um, I noticed on his right arm, his bicep, there was a scratch which I identified as a potential defensive wound. Um, on his left arm, he had a forearm scratch that was very similar, uh, which in my mind, I looked like fingernail scratches to me. While he was sitting there speaking to us, I also noticed on his left wrist, just below the palm, 
um, he had a puncture maybe a half an inch wide um, that through my experiences of playing sports in high school and receiving the same injury from fingernails in football, um, I could see like wet flesh, like almost like it was fresh. It wasn't very old, um, possibly still irritated. Um, and as he moved his, his wrists, when I was looking at them closely, I could actually see the liquid or I guess body fluids that would be in that cut um, kind of reflecting with light. Did you observe, um, oh, I'm going to publish a few of the photos. May, uh, Court, would you talk, please talk a little bit, Your Honor? <coughs> States 186. What is, who is that? That's Jose Ibarra. And how would you describe his beard and mustache situation? Um, it's thicker than Diego's, if I remember correctly. Um, not well maintained. He had sort of a neck beard. Um, wasn't very long, but it was definitely an established beard. I wouldn't consider it uh, like a five o'clock shadow. Did Jose Ibarra have any tattoos on his neck? No. As far as height and weight differentials, mm -hmm. you were with both Jose Ibarra and Diego Ibarra? Correct. How would you describe their height and weight differential? Um, Jose, at the time, um, weighed more um, through my observations um, and was shorter. And when you say at the time, does he look thinner in court today? He does. Okay. Is that the way he looked on February 23rd as far as weight? When I say he, I mean Jose. No. States 188, what's that? That is the back of Jose's head. 187. That is a close-up picture of Jose's mouth and lips. Um, we were concerned. It looked like the, his lips were red and irritated. 189. A side profile picture. That's the right arm um, with a scratch. 191. That would be the left lower wrist forearm area. Um, with a scratch, as well as the, the palm. 192. That is his left palm um, that had some bruising on the thumb palm area. And if you kind of look below that area, you'll see an irritated red area, which is where I saw that fingernail puncture mark. Okay, the one that was pussing or oozing? You said? Yeah, yeah, it was. Could you please point to that in 192? At the middle of the screen. Thank you. Right. 193. That's another picture of his right arm uh, with a tattoo, but also you can see the fingernail scratch. And 194. That is a scratch on his forearm. At some point, did you question Jose Ibarra about his injuries? I used a, a translator, yes, we did. Who was that translator? That was Officer or Corporal uh, Rafael Sayan. <clears throat> and is that the individual, Rafael Sayan? Did we just see him in now uh, 1519 in your body cam video? Hold Correction. on, I'll back it up a little bit. Is that Rafael Sayan? Correct, okay. yes. And um, <coughs> may, may I have one moment with counsel? Yes. Sergeant Epps, <laughs> at this point uh, in your day, how, how would you describe uh, the legal status of Jose Ibarra? He's detained. Okay. And in that uh, detention, did did Officer Sayan and did you ask Officer Sayan to advise him that he had been detained? Correct. Yes, we did. And did you ask Officer Sayan to advise him that he was not under arrest? Yes, we did. And did you ask Officer Sayan to advise them uh, that you were obtaining a search warrant for their apartment? We did. Okay. 
So during uh, this detention of the defendant, first of all, tell me, were they allowed to move freely around in y'all's presence? Yes, um, I think mainly Rosa Belli uh, was standing up the whole time. She was walking around freely. They were talking to each other. They started smoking cigarettes. We heard people laughing. Um, I even made the, the comment to my officers of let's make sure we're listening to what they're saying in case we get some utterances. Um, but so yeah, we weren't restricting their rights to talk to each other or anything like that. And who specifically did you see smoking? Uh, I believe at one point I did see um, Jose smoking a cigarette. So he's, he was allowed to smoke a cigarette. Yes. Is he, did, is he handcuffed in any way? No. Okay. And, and there are conversations amongst, the, I guess, the four of them were talking amongst one another. You said you heard laughter about how many times? I only heard it probably once, um, and it was from, I think, Rosa Belli, um, maybe Arhenis. Um, I didn't know what they were talking about. From what I understand, talking to Officer Sayan, um, they were... Um, they thought it was amusing how many police cars we had um, and that the mobile command center was showing up in the parking lot. During this time period, did you ask Officer Sayan to ask Jose Ibarra how he got his injuries? We did. Okay. I am, and was that captured on your body cam video? I believe so. And if I were to continue to play this, would that be the part that we're about to see? Yes, what I'm going to do is wait till Officer Sayan is here so he can translate what was being said. Um, and I think, Your Honor, uh, that completes my questions, except for uh, this. Sergeant Epps, did you ever search the apartment yourself that day? No. And who did the search of the apartment? To my knowledge, GBI agents. Did you arrest the defendant for anything that day? No. And at some point during this day, did you learn um, or did you see him get arrested by ACCPD for a bench warrant that was outstanding for athens Clark County? Yes, ma'am. And, Your Honor, all of that evidence has already been admitted through the stipulation of Sergeant Johnson. Attached to Sergeant Johnson's stipulation are the exhibits from his testimony, including the bench warrant that, he was, that this defendant was arrested for that day. So I just want to close the record on that. And I'll pass the witness. Good morning. When you first saw Diego Ibarra, he was wearing the hat that you had seen your suspect wearing in this picture. On Diego, yeah. um, initially or throughout my interactions with him? What's the closest you got to him, I guess? Uh, very close, a, a foot away. And when you looked at the hat, on the back of the hat, on the brim, you could see dirt. What I believe to be dirt. Is it fair to say that it looks like red clay dirt? I think initially that's what I thought it was. Um, you also at some point saw that Diego had a UGA employment ID. Correct. correct. And that ID allows him access to some of UGA's campus, right? Yes, yeah. And um, when you were informed that Diego was first seen walking towards the Rogers Road bus stop. Correct. And that bus stop is specifically a place where UGA buses can come and pick up students, right? Yes. Um, and you also were able to confirm through uh, an investigating your internal UGA database that uh, Diego did work for a UGA department, is that correct? Correct. He worked for the Bolton Dining Commons? There were some issues figuring out exactly where, because it doesn't necessarily say their their place of employment. It'll say he's in that division. Um, so once we, we kind of figured that out later on. But yeah, we knew he was an employee for dining. So you did eventually establish that he worked at uh, Bolton Dining Commons? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, You also noticed that Diego was wearing dark, long pants. Uh, yes. And we know that the dark, long pants are similar to the ones that were in the video of the man walking toward the dumpster. Right. Yes, ma'am. Um, when you first saw Jose Ibarra, he was asleep. 
right? Yes, I believe so. You had trouble waking him up. I wouldn't say trouble waking him up. I just had to talk very loudly. Okay. And you also had to kind of rap on the door frame. Yeah, to, to wake him up. And you would agree with me he was a little slow initially getting up and out of bed. Correct. But you believe that was because he was confused having just woken up. Um, I, I didn't know what he was doing. I couldn't see his head. Um, I said there's a guy asleep right here because he was in a sleep posture under covers. I couldn't see his hands. Um, so he was slow. I could see the possible confusion because I'm not very good at speaking Spanish. Um, I'm sure that to a Spanish speaker, I have a foreign accent like a Spanish speaker may have a foreign accent with English to me. Um, so that's why I could see why there may have been some confusion for him. But to be clear, you felt that his slowness to respond was due to your Spanish speaking, his having woken up rather than passively resisting. Possibly, yes. And that's what you put in your report. Yes, I, yes. When Officer Bridges came in and, and delivered the command to show his hands, Mr. Ibarra immediately put his hands in the air. Correct. Um, now, when you when you detained all the individuals, they were detained outside of the apartment. Correct. And it was February morning, right? Correct. It was a little bit chilly. Uh, it was kind of somewhere, honestly, if I remember um, correctly, the the weather now about fifties, sixties. At some point, Rose Bailey asked to get a jacket because she was cold. As I was leaving the apartment, she I was informed by, I believe Bridges or maybe it was an Athens officer that she wanted a jacket. Okay. Um, when you observed the markings on Hosea Barra, you did not observe any blood in the woods. I didn't see blood, no. They did not appear deep enough to draw blood. Um, no, the only one that I think could reasonably draw blood, um, which obviously the scratches that I wouldn't say would be dripping blood, there could have been blood present, um, but that left puncture on the wrist that I described, I could see there being more blood coming from that than his scratches. Did you observe any scabbing? No. Call your next witness. State calls Raphael Sayan. 